everyone. In this video, we are going to see different methods of finding RTH. So, what is RTH? RTH is Thevenin's equivalent impedance or Norton's equivalent impedance or it is also known as internal impedance. Before starting this video, I would suggest you to subscribe this channel to get latest updates and do like and share this video. So let's start this. So there are basically two categories. First is when the circuit containing no dependent sources means all the sources are independent as you can see in this example. The second one is when circuit is containing dependent sources like in this case this is your dependent source as the current supplied by this source depends upon the current flowing in this branch. So first we will see the first category. First category means circuit containing no dependent sources. So for such cases we will replace all the sources by their respective internal impedances. Which means if the sources are ideal then voltage source will become short circuited and current source will become open circuited. And then we will find the internal or equivalent impedance of the network looking through the load. The load terminal kept open circuited. Let's solve this question of ESE 2017 to get a better understanding. Here you can see this source is independent. It is not dependent. So you have to find the value of resistance R which will allow the maximum power dissipation in the circuit and this is your circuit. So according to the maximum power transfer theorem, load will receive maximum power when load resistance is equal to the internal or Thevenin resistance. So we will convert this circuit into Thevenin's equivalent circuit. And this RTH will be equivalent resistance or internal resistance of the circuit. And for maximum power transfer, load resistance should equal to this RTH. So the first step was to short all the voltage source and open all the current source. But since here it is only voltage source, so we will short this one. After shorting the voltage source, we will get this circuit. And now you have to calculate the resistance seen from this load terminal. So RTH is equal to 5 plus parallel combination of 20 and 10 ohm. So by solving this we will get RTH is equal to 11.66 ohm. So this is your equivalent resistance and load resistance should be equal to this RTH to transfer maximum power. And this is how we calculate RTH in case of absence of dependent sources. Next we will move on to the second category. So circuits containing dependent sources. In this category there are two methods. First we will see the first method. So in first method first we will find the open circuit voltage VOC across the open circuited to load terminals by conventional network analysis. And then we will find the ISC which is short circuit current when the load terminals are shorted. And then the equivalent resistance or Thevenin equivalent resistance is equal to VOC upon ISC. Let's take this example of gate 2009. I have modified this question a little bit. I have combined two questions in one so that you will get a better understanding. For the circuit given below. Find the Thevenin's voltage and Thevenin's resistance across the terminal A and B. So you have to find VTH and RTH between these two terminals. Here you can see that you have this dependent voltage source and this is your independent voltage source. So this is independent and this is dependent. Okay, one thing you can notice here that the load terminal is already open. You don't have to open it. There are some students who will get confused and will open this resistance. But you don't have to open this. 
in the question the load resistance is already open here you can see this a and b it is clearly mentioned so first we are going to calculate vth so what is vth vth is thevenin's voltage across this load terminals so let us assume that this i current is flowing here from 5 volt source and uh, this i dash current is flowing through this network and then the current flowing through this 2 kilo ohm will be i minus i dash now what is vab which is your vth so what is your vab vab is 1 kilo ohm into i dash instead of writing thousand i'm writing this k so don't get confused i'm writing this just for my convenience so vab is equal to 1k into i dash therefore this voltage will become 3k i dash now let's apply kvl in loop 1 in this direction so 5 volt is equal to 2 kilo ohm into i which is this plus 2 kilo ohm into this current which is 2ki minus 2ki dash so we will get this equation now apply kvl in this second loop i am taking this direction but you can take any direction you want so 3vab is equal to 2k into current flowing which is i minus i dash so it is equal to 2ki minus 2ki dash and then it will go here which is i dash into k so this is your i dash k and after solving this you will get i is equal to 3i dash and now using these two equation we will get ki dash is equal to 0 0.5 now we will use this equation and this first equation so we get VTH is equal to VAB is equal to 0 0.5 volt. So we have calculated VTH which is 0 0.5 volt. Now we will calculate RTH using the first method which I have told you earlier. Let's take a quick look again. So in this method we have to find VOC which we have just calculated which is 0 0.5 volt. And now we will calculate ISC which is the current flowing through the shorted terminals we will short the load terminals and find the current and then the rth is equal to voc upon isc so this is your vth and now for isc we will short this ab so when this is shorted then this one kilo ohm will be useless so we will remove this first we will get this circuit and now as you can see that the voltage between a and b is zero so 3vab will also become zero and this will get removed here so this is zero therefore we can draw this circuit like this so 5 volt and then 2 kilo ohm and here 2 kilo ohm in parallel to this short circuit again this 2 kilo ohm is parallel to a short circuit therefore it will get removed so we will get this and now isc is what 5 upon 2k so isc is 5 upon 2k and now rth so rth is vth upon isc vth is 0 0.5 volt and isc is 5 upon 2k so we will get 200 ohm but the option was in kilo ohms so we will write 0 0.2 kilo ohm so this is your answer remember here that this k i have used means thousand i have used it here like this for my convenience only instead of 2k you can write 2000 here also now we will see the second method of calculating rth so in the second method we will remove the load resistance so in the given question the load resistance was already removed so this step is done now we will apply a DC driving voltage VDC at the open circuited terminal. Then we will replace all the independent sources by their respective internal impedances. In case of idle sources, voltage will become short and current will become open circuited. And then a DC driving current which is IDC will flow in the circuit from the load terminals 
due to application of this VDC and therefore RTH is equal to VDC upon IDC. So this is the steps. Now we will again take that example and calculate RTH using this method. So calculating RTH using the second method. This was your question. First step was to open the load terminals which was already opened. Second step was to apply a DC battery voltage here at the load. Then next step was to replace all the sources by their internal impedance. So we will short this voltage source and we will apply VDC which is supplying IDC current. In order to make it more convenient and more easy, we will assume that VDC is equal to 1 volt. So VDC is 1 volt and VDC here in this case is equal to VAB. So VAB will become 1 volt and therefore this 3 VAB will become 3 volt. So we will get this circuit. So here you can see that this is your 3 volt and this is your 1 volt and this 1 volt is supplying IDC current here in this direction and this 2 kilo ohm and 2 kilo ohm are now in parallel. So their equivalent resistance will be 1 kilo ohm. Also this is 1 kilo ohm and the voltage is 1 volt here. So the current flowing will be in this direction and its value will be 1 milliampere. How? I is equal to V by R. V is 1 volt and resistance is 1000. Therefore you will get 1 milliampere. So 1 milliampere is current in this direction. Therefore, the current flowing here in this direction will be IDC minus 1 milliampere. Now we will apply KVL in this loop in this direction. So 3 volt is equal to 1 kilo ohm into current which is IDC minus 1 milliampere minus Y minus because current here in, is in this direction and we are going here in this direction. So minus this 1 milliampere current into 1 kilo ohm resistance which is 1. So on calculating we get IDC is equal to 5 upon K. And K is what? 1000. Therefore we will get IDC is equal to 5 milliampere. And now what is RTH? RTH is VDC upon IDC. And IDC is 5 milliampere. And we have assumed that VDC is equal to 1 volt. So we will get 200 ohm or 0 0.2 kilo ohm. So this is your RTH. You can solve this question by taking VDC as it is. But then there will be two variables and you might get confused. So in order to remove that confusion, we have taken VDC is equal to 1 volt. And thus this makes our answer very simple. So these were the methods of calculating RTH. If you like this video then please give a thumbs up and do subscribe for more such videos. You can hit the bell icon to get instant notification. For any queries you can comment below and if you feel then you can share this video also. You can also help me by suggesting me the next video topic. So thank you and bye bye.